Welcome to our YouTube series, Five Days to Better Health. And one of the things you tell us about all the time, us doctors, is a feeling of having no energy, of feeling tired all the time. This is so common, isn't it? It's so common. If I do a clinic, all day clinic, I will get two or three people come in complaining they're tired all the time and they always want a blood test but that isn't necessarily what they need. No, nope, it happens to me all the time as well. And, and you know, what I say is, let's get them, these medical things out of the way. Sometimes iron deficiency, anemia mm. might be responsible. Sometimes vitamin D deficiency, sometimes an underactive thyroid. They're probably right up there as the three commonest. But yeah. excluding those, most people who feel tired all the time and lacking energy mm. don't have a medical issue. As you say, they don't need a blood test. It's what they're doing in their lifestyle that is, is crippling them. Yeah, and the key thing is, there are simple changes that we can all make that will give us more energy, boost us, uh, without having to struggle for a GP appointment. Absolutely, <laughs> and one of the things I say to people is start at first thing in the morning. So when you get up uh, mm. and it's daylight, get out there yeah. in the fresh air and daylight. Daylight is a, has a wonderful effect on the back of the eye. It switches off the melatonin, as you know, yeah. that's the sleep hormone, the natural sleep hormone. Light on the back of the eye shuts that off, you're more alert straight away and try not to use the snooze button on your phone mm. or your alarm. Because if you put the snooze on, on your alarm, you kind of go into a sleep inertia, you think go back to sleep, and that interrupts that, that cycle of get up now. You've woken up, now's the time to get up, get going. Yes. So put the alarm, if you like, on the other side of the bedroom. Yes. So you have to get up to switch it off. <laughs> that works for me. Sometimes I just go back to bed though, Hilary, that's the problem. <laughs> Now, when I talk to patients who are tired all the time, the first thing I ask them is say, talk me through a typical day. And what I've realised, I think we all know this, is that we all have busy, busy, busy lives. And being busy has not only just been normalised, it's been expected. You're supposed to be busy at work, you're supposed to be busy at home. You know, downtime is often thought of as a failure almost of, you know, if you're not busy, you're not successful. But that busyness is not what our, our body is designed to do. Our stress hormone cortisol skyrockets when you're busy. And that uses up a lot of energy every single minute of every single day. And if you're using that level of energy, you're going to be yeah. tired. Do you put it in your diary time in the day to just relax and unwind and think and meditate, live for the moment? That is such a good idea. I'm going to start doing that. Okay. And other people can do that as well. And I'm a great believer in exercise. People think you need energy to exercise and yes of course you do need energy you burn energy when you exercise but you create more mm. than you use yes so when you exercise you're releasing all sorts of hormones in your body you're exercising your muscles your heart your lungs your brain um, you're making dopamine and you're making serotonin the happy hormone mm. which is some reason why people become a little bit addicted to exercise it's no bad thing but you're feeling better yeah. when you've done your exercise and you feel more energized. Mm. And I know, I mean, in, in, my, in my life, when I've, I felt tired as, as a busy GP sometimes, and I've gone to have a game of squash, mm. when I could have had a sleep, I feel loads better if yeah. I've had a game of squash. Yeah, or yeah. It could be any exercise, but you will, if you're feeling a bit groggy, it'll wake you up. Yeah. And you'll sleep better later on in the evening mm -hmm. when it's time to go to bed. And the other big thing alongside exercise is food, isn't it? You want, you need energy from, from food. And the, the temptation is when you're feeling tired, your hunger hormones go up. So a particular oh, yeah. one called ghrelin will, will go up. And there is a temptation to reach for sugary processed foods because you think that sugar will give me a boost of energy and I'll feel better. But what, you, what you're doing is causing a big spike in your energy and then a crash. Yeah. And so when we talk about carbohydrates. That's another word that people are a bit nervous about. Are they going, oh, can't have carbs? But there are, car there are carbs and then there are carbs, aren't they? Not all carbs are created sure. equal. equal. That's right. uh, so those kind of more complex carbohydrates that you get in potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, legumes. Bananas. Or bananas, yes. <laughs> they Ask are any the tennis player, right? <laughs> That's right, or squash player. Or squash player, of course. Uh, and they will stabilise out your sugars, yeah. give you that energy for longer, give you much more kind of to work with through the day. Don't be scared of carbs, just choose the right carbs. Yeah, and eating too much, of course. I mean, we all know what it's like. So, you know, if, you, if you have a, a massive meal, you're going to feel soporific. So it, it's about little and often sometimes. Mm. It's about not too ha having a, a big heavy meal, um, which is just going to slow you down and, and, and use up energy. But a little and often. Um, I like the Ayurvedic medicine um, anecdote of the 
digestive fire. Mm. You'll be familiar with this. Yes. But imagine there's a little bonfire burning in the pit of your stomach. If you overload it with too much, too many logs and coal, you'll just put it out and all you'll get is smoke. Yes. But if it's burning brightly by feeding it a little log at a time, yes. food, then vroom, loads of energy being created. The flames are bright. And I love that anecdote because it's mm. so true. It's so true. And one fire we've got to keep burning to keep our energy is our brain uh, and keep that energised. And I think right now, in today's world, we are so overstimulated, aren't we? With, with things that I'm, I'm as guilty as anyone. You know, I'll go on my phone and I'll just stay on it and scroll. But that overstimulation of our brain, not only does it like really tire my eyes out. I know when I've been on my phone for a while, my eyes get that strained feeling, but also my brain just feels really groggy and I just think, oh, I've just zapped myself of all that energy. Absolutely, there's information overload. I mean, on our devices, we've got notifications, we've got apps, and it's very tempting. And we know that the, these apps are designed to keep you scrolling and people do this doom scrolling at mm. night, don't they? So every, every horrible you know, bit of news yes. is, is, is in your mind. And, and that really isn't conducive to relaxation, to uh, calming down and, and being soothed, which you need before sleep. And I think if you're going to have energy, you, you need to give yourself a chance to create that energy. Mm. So I, you know, that idea of putting a, a time every day in your diaries, this is me time, yeah. you know, I'm not going to be interrupted by this, and learn to say no sometimes. You know, yeah. Good people often say yes to everything. Mm. You know, the boss comes on, can you do this, can you do that? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. You say, yeah. Socially, can you do this? Can you? And you end up doing everything, yeah. and there's never time for yourself. And I think it's really important to put time aside for just you, mm. so you can think about things, put them in perspective, and then carry on later with all that energy yeah, that restored. Is so important, it's so important. One of the other questions that, that patients ask me is, what supplement would you recommend to boost my energy? In fact, what they ask me for is a tablet to give them energy. That's like their favorite thing. I say, if I had the tablet <laughs> to give you energy, I would be a very rich man. But supplements, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with. I love them if someone is deficient in something mm. and they mm. need them, mm. and that will definitely help them. But for most people, with the possible exception of vitamin D through the winter months, don't need supplements. They should be getting their nutrients from food. That is the best way because you're not, when you take a supplement, you might be taking, let's say, a vitamin B complex. You're only getting that vitamin B, nothing else. But if you have a piece of food with vitamin B, you've got all the other nutritional benefits that that piece of food gives you as well. Yeah. And what we have in common in this series uh, this week is that there are things that we can do to help and the things that we are doing to ourselves which really don't help our mm. energy levels. And people, you know, are probably, uh, generally speaking, drinking too much alcohol. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant. Yeah. You know, people think, oh, it's stimulating, it makes me feel less inhibited. But actually, it's a depressant. It's depressing that part of the nervous system that keeps our inhibitions, you know, yes. um, and so we become disinhibited. But actually, too much alcohol is definitely making us tired. Yeah. It, it has a soporific effect, and for those people who take it at night to think they're going to make, they're going to help them sleep, mm -hmm. it's just the opposite. You're going to yeah. wake up, you're going to rebound effect halfway through the night, that's going to interrupt your sleep, you have less energy the next day. So uh, avoiding things that make you feel tired as well. So devices is one, alcohol is another. Yes. But there are so many positive things we can do. Yeah. And you, you talked about at the start of this nutritional deficiencies or certain deficiencies like iron deficiency can certainly make you tired. And you might get some medic medication for if you're low in iron or if you're low in folic acid, you, you might get three or four months worth of, of tablets to, to fix that. But in that time, you have got to solve the problem which caused that deficiency. There is no point going around in a cycle where you're deficient, you take your treatment. I see this all the time, particularly with vitamin D deficiency. They take their treatment for three or four months and then they come back and go, well, I had the tablets last time. I feel like I'm low again. I went, well, what have you changed? <laughs> you stopped Nothing. taking them. Yeah. <laughs> then you're not solving the problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's so important to learn. And, and you know, I think it's perfectly possible to, to feel re-energized. It's not something that you have to live with. Um, it's about taking small steps yeah. and thinking, I'm going to give myself some time to do this. I'm not going to do that. I am going to do this. And learn to say no sometimes, yes. you know, to, to make sure that you're not overdoing it, yeah. you're not being over challenged, delegate some of the work out to other people uh, and deal with that stress. And then I think people will have more of that get up and go that they need. I think so. 
So what would our top tips be to give you more energy? I would say good quality sleep. For sure. And exercise. It gives you energy. It doesn't take it away. Absolutely. And avoiding those things that sap our energy, like too much alcohol and too much on our devices. Yes.